Thank you. Thank you all. Wow, I have to say I'm a bit awestruck to be standing here with John Miller. I'm not going to lie. It's really an honor. Thank you. John Miller is someone who's been a trailblazer in so many ways, but even more specifically for the history of this event itself, the State of Our Art. Before we get into the 2017 State of Our Art session, John and I would like to take a few moments to recognize someone special who's been a pioneer for this much beloved perennial session. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, as so many of you may not know that uh, I and me and State of Our Art go back a long way. For those wondering how and when it all began, it actually started at the BPA convention in 1980. It was called Words, Picture, and Music, the State of Our Art. It was hosted by Steve Somer, then head of marketing at CBS, and his creative director, Lynn Lussier. I actually produced that very first one. And then the following year, in 1981, I co-hosted with Steve, and it became the major session at the convention, much as it is today. And today, we will be celebrating the 37th State of Our Art. Wow. Now, over the years, I've hosted, co-hosted, and even wrote a number of our State of Our Art sessions, but I will always associate State of Our Art with a very special member in our audience here today. A number of years ago, in one of those hosting years, I met Jay Curtis, a very creative writer, producer, and soon to become a very good friend. Many times, Jay and I collaborated on the production of State of Our Art, and he definitely had to endure my sometimes elaborate requests, from booking the Southern Cal Marching Band, setting up a magic act entrance, and there were several requests for specific spots that I had randomly seen somewhere at some time. You probably are familiar with that. Yep. Well, Jay always delivered with a smile, a quip, or a laugh, and for many years, regardless of the host, Jay was the wizard behind the curtain that made State of Our Art run. But aside from producing all those State of Our Art sessions, Jay was the creative lifeguard for years, helping the CBS marketing team. He produced network branding that was always stamped with his unique charm and wit. We now have some of his work to show you. Take a look. This is where we had the actors say such things as, Only on CBS. And then they said, We're rolling! And lastly, we had them say, Ed, what is it? Shouldn't you be lying down? From the limos we provide to the caviar we lay out, to obviously the facilities that we provide for our stars, some of the dressing rooms we have here. Uh, Sybil, five minutes. CBS, welcome CBS, home. Welcome okay, home. Ray. The address is CBS. The Civil Broadcasting System. The address is CBS. Welcome home. Ed, get some girls. Come up to the house. CBS. Oh, it's that creepy eye. CBS. Welcome home. CBS. Welcome home. CBS. Welcome. What? What? Oh. Home. Welcome home. The address is CBS. Welcome home. You know, in truth, you could call Jay a visionary. Perhaps not in the realm of fashion, but certainly <laughs> in foreshadowing the way in which our business has evolved. Uh, thank you to Alan Kay and the BDA and Apple Computers for putting that together. It is mind-boggling when you think of the way that the media is going to interact in this interactive video that is going to be far beyond what we would imagine it to be in just four years. The ability to interface video into the computer realm, I think is going to change television. You can write that down. There you go. Jay was always good at preparing for change within the industry, but nothing could prepare him for the change that he's facing now. A short time ago, Jay's life took an unexpected turn when he was diagnosed with ALS, commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. But in unique Jay Curtis style, he approached this part of his life's journey with grace 
and creativity as he chronicled his thoughts and experiences through a book of poems. As only Jay could, his latest work is funny, thought-provoking, and in many ways, life-affirming. So today we thank and honor Jay, not just for his boundless creativity, humor, and energy, but also for his inspiring courage as he eloquently writes about his diagnosis with ALS. As we all know, our time on this earth is finite, and as you all know, everything we do in business is a chase to capture time, seize a moment, and have a great impression. So to that point, here to read Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow from Jay's book, In and Out of Dreaming, please welcome voiceover artist Joe Cipriano. Thank you. Thanks, John. Scott, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be standing here uh, today and reading one of uh, Jay's poems. This is one that I particularly like because the subject is something that we deal with all the time uh, in the world of promo, and that's time. So the poem is titled, Yesterday, Today Was Tomorrow. You can find time, you can lose time but you can't stop time. You can take a time out, you can give a time out, but you can't stop time. You can tell time, but it never listens because only time will tell. You can bide your time, but you can't kill time. It'll just go on and on as you move forward in time. You can never go back in time, Time doesn't really stand still, not even for you and me. Time clicks a metronome singing its signature song with lyrics that cause flashes of life's momentary highlights jammed into my life movie. I imagine there will be a moment when all the white flashes congeal. Only then will the final gun sound, hopefully fired from a starter's pistol, merely signaling my overtime period. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming to the stage writer, director, producer, teacher, poet, and all-round great Irishman, Mr. Jay <laughs> Curtis. Um, I accept uh, uh, John, Scott, and Jill this honor kind of on behalf of everyone who has worked at BPA, BPME, or now Promax, or any of you or people in the past who have donated their time to this association. Um, to paraphrase Lou Gehrig's, uh, who gave his name to this terrible disease, I consider myself the luckiest man in the world of promotion and marketing. <laughs> I um, have a thank you speech, but as you can hear, my ability to speak is being compromised. However, my voice will remain, and I am able to write, and luckily, I have a voiceover person <laughs> to deliver my speech. When he says, I, He's not referring to him. No. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Yes. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> He's referring to me. So, Joe. Thank uh, you very much. Oh. <laughs> very nice of you. I, I was told that it was double scale, though, um, for this gig. <laughs> Talk to your agent. Oh, did you? <laughs> Very good. I appreciate that. 
I usually read Jay's words in 30 second chunks, so this will be a, a little bit different. Try to keep it. Oh, okay, well, thank you. Oh, this is oh, through the whole thing. This is how this is going to go. Smile. smile. Okay, I've got a smile. Remember, the I is you. Yeah. Yes. I have been lucky to have a special relationship with this organization that goes back to when it was BPME. That's what it was called back in 1987 when Lance Webster hired me as the <laughs> member services director. Sometimes I think I, I should have paid tuition to work here. I, I learned the art of promotion and marketing from members, staff, and board members like John Miller, Mike Mishler, and, and so many others. I was lucky to have worked with some amazing people in my career, Chuck Bloor, Steve Somer, Robbie Davis, and Sam Glick, who along with John Murphy, taught me how to write promos. Luckily, I met Mike Mishler, who took a chance on me and for whom I produced several of these presentations and executive produced the annual CBS Mondo shoots. Howard Barish became my partner in crime on all of the shoots and uh, to another man for whom I produced a number of these sessions and who trusted me to be his creative lifeguard for the CBS on-air brand, we're talking about the Don Draper of promo the late, great Ron Scalera. I've been lucky to have a dream job writing for and directing hundreds uh, of celebrities, to name a few, and Jay was not afraid to name a few of these celebrities. <laughs> Bob Newhart, Dick Van Dyke, Dan Rather, George Clooney, Ray Romano, David Letterman, and Bill Cosby. Uh, <laughs> oh. Ray Romano and David Letterman. <laughs> I'd like to thank the group who decided to honor me here, Steve Kazajian, Aaron Serlectic, Lee Hunt and John Beckerman, uh, Joel Beckerman, excuse me, and Allison Mirso. I've always believed in this association and this convention because members get to come to be inspired and learn from each other, as well as commiserate with the only people on earth who truly understand what we do. So thank you to Promax for always being that constant during my career. Uh, and uh, Jay, I, can't go without saying how eternally grateful I am to my entire family, and especially to someone who is beautiful both inside and out, my wife, Becky, and JT, my son, who is an incredibly gifted musician. And just to be clear, she's not my wife, Becky. No. <laughs> they both help me live every day with the devastating, deteriorating effects of ALS. So over the years, along with writing promo copy, I've also written poetry. Sometimes I do this while waiting for meetings to begin in edit bays and, and maybe on show sets. I believe to be successful in either discipline, you need to be able to whittle down precise, powerful phrases with a keen sense of rhythm and voice. My book of poetry, In and Out of Dreaming, chronicling my ALS journey, seen here, <laughs> is something that is near and dear to my heart with a portion of the proceeds going to the ALS research. So please, when you have a moment, you can find more information uh, about the book on the flyer that was on your seat when you came in. Now with that, every year, when writing copy for this session, Steve Somer, John Miller, Mike Mishler, and Ron Scalera made sure to sign off with this. Never, ever let the bastards grind you down. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.